For better experience, use headphones. This is a fantastic device to keep people enslaved forever. And to cover this, there's a whole lot of other stories which I don't want to enter. A phenomenal tools to control populations, which has been successfully done for a long time. Uh, it depends on how we shaped ourselves. If we become wonderful human beings, it's one thing. If we have become an ugly manifestation of humanity, definitely it's an original sin. It's a mistake. Sin is too strong a word, maybe it's a mistake. <laughs> so too many mistakes are being made in the world, no question. You claim to <clears throat> appreciate or, well, you worship the one who is referred to as the creator, but you have a huge issue with the creation. If you do not appreciate the creation, why the hell should you worship the creator? Someone who made such a bad job of this, <laughs> The only way you can even be born is through sin, I think he must be banished. <laughs> now this is a fantastic device to keep people enslaved forever. If you do not even allow them to come to terms with their biology, they'll never come to terms with anything in their life. Always they will be dependent on an institution or a person or something who claims to have connections. An Italian mafia guy was once brought to the law court and uh, he just walked in with his fat cigar in his hand and like this, he came and sat down like he's a guest. Then the judge looked at his arrogance and asked, do you have a lawyer? He blew the smoke out and said, well, I got friends in the jury <laughs> So, <laughs> people were supposed to have connections elsewhere. You will always be enslaved to them because you feel guilty about your biology. This whole thing goes into more grosser and grosser states. So except in certain cultures, everywhere else where dominant religious beliefs were spread, in all those cultures, unfortunately, they make you feel guilty of your very existence because that way, you will always be enslaved to whatever they have set up. Something so fundamental as the menstrual cycles in a woman, she has to feel guilty about it and she's impure. Her existence is impure. Unfortunately, I want you and all the teachers of the world to understand, if your mother did not have menstrual cycles, you wouldn't be born even if she met your father. <laughs> yes. So the life-making material, unused, is what it is. And if that is impure, your very birth is impure, that's what they're anyway trying to tell you, that your birth is impure. And to cover this, there's a whole lot of other stories which I don't want to enter. <laughs> Once you're not in terms with your own physical existence, you essentially will never ever be in terms with any other dimension of your life. This itself will cover you forever. This is… 
This is a fantastic trick to keep you enslaved forever. No wonder institutions have lasted. Though they've lost their relevance, they stay simply because your existence, your very existence you're guilty of. If you're guilty of your very existence, that means one or that which is the source of creation should be even more guilty. You are eternally guilty and that which is created all this must be even more carrying the burden of guilt. Guilt and fear have been a phenomenal tools to control populations, which has been successfully done for a long time. It's time, this is broken. See, uh, we have a biology, we cannot put it under the carpet, it's there. It's best we address it for what it is. But right now the problem in the world is, because certain religious institutions in the world took this attitude that the very biology of the human being is wrong, because of this, culture started hiding it under the carpet. Well, in this culture we never had it, but after the British came and left, we became more prudish than the British. But before that, if you look at our temples, uh, all the outside temple art is all pornographic, if that's what you want to call it. But we don't call it pornographic, we are only talking about the various dimensions of human biology. Because we don't see it as wrong, but we see it as the periphery of life. If you stay there only, you will stay on the physical dimension forever, you will not explore anything else. So in the temple, always it's the periphery. You are supposed to look at that and understand it's the periphery of life and try to make an attempt to go deeper, but at the same time not to be in denial of it. Not to glorify it or not to be in denial of it is the most important thing. The menstrual cycles in a woman, she has to feel guilty about it and she's impure. Her existence is impure. Unfortunately, I want you and all the teachers of the world to understand, if your mother did not have menstrual cycle, she wouldn't be born, even if she met your father. <laughs> yes. So the life-making material, unused, is what it is. And if that is impure, your very birth is impure, that's what they're anyway trying to tell you, that your birth is impure. And to cover this, there's a whole lot of other stories which I don't want to enter <laughs> Once you are not in terms with your own physical existence, you are essentially will never ever be in terms with any other dimension of your life. This itself will cover you forever. This is… this is a fantastic trick to keep you enslaved forever. No wonder institutions have lasted. Though they've lost their relevance, they stay simply because your existence, your very existence you're guilty of. If you're guilty of your very existence, that means one or that which is the source of creation should be even more guilty. You are eternally guilty and that which is created all this must be even more carrying the burden of guilt. Guilt and fear have been a phenomenal tools to control populations, which has been successfully done for a long time. So there are many reasons why one indulges in sex. For some it is just pleasure, for some it is a way of building this bond and companionship. Otherwise people feel they're going away from each other. They may be just fine, but a lot of people, it is psyched in their mind that if they're not sexually involved, they're actually moving away. Not true. You can be very close to somebody and need not be involved in any physical manner, isn't it? But societies are psyching, especially in this part of the world, people are hugely psyched. If there's no sexuality, you don't really have a relationship. In fact, the word relationship, it's only… it took me some time to understand. But here, if you say a relationship, you are supposed to understand it's sex-based relationship. Nothing else is a relationship. 
if… if I… I can have a very strong relationship with you and not be concerned about your body, isn't it? I may not be drawn to your body in any way, but I can have a very powerful relationship with you. But all those possibilities are completely discounted. A relationship means you must be in some way physically involved, man, woman or man, man, woman, woman, whatever you like. There is a god of love and lust called Kama. Kama means lust. He hides behind a tree and uh, shoots an arrow at Shiva's heart. Top head hits him and Shiva gets a little disturbed. Then he sees it's Kama. Then he opened up his third eye, a fiery eye and burnt Kama. Then Shiva took the ashes of this burnt Kama and smeared himself. That is the general story told to the people. But you tell me, your lust arises within you or behind the tree? Within you. Desire is not hanging outside. It is not because a beautiful woman or a beautiful man is sitting there, your desire comes. Because the desire, the karma is within you. So he opened his third eye and burned the karma within himself, not the one who is standing outside. Because he never ever stood outside. Please look at this and see. Your lustfulness, your desiring nature never ever stood outside, it only stood inside. Lust is not just about opposite sex, shopping is lust because you have to go towards something, only then life will be complete. Every desire is lust because without that I cannot exist. I want that because only when I have that, this will be complete. Essentially lust means it creates a sense of incompleteness within you and a longing for something that it makes you feel if you don't have that, you're not complete. I don't know, it may sound strange, but I think most people are like that. We spend a lot of our energy in our life thinking about the other sex and sexuality and all that stuff. Nothing's changed about it. It's just that your intelligence has been hijacked by your hormones. It's not you. It's just compulsive behavior, isn't it? When you were a child, it didn't matter what reproductive organs somebody carries. Physical relation and sexuality are a part of life. Aside from reproduction, physical relation can be about intimacy and pleasure. Physical relation is an important part of life and overall well-being. In relationships, orgasms play a significant part in bonding. Physical and emotional benefits like reduced risk of heart disease, improved self-esteem, and more can come from having physical relation. Physical relation can help you connect to your partner thanks to oxytocin. Oxytocin can play a role in developing relationships. You may find that consistent mutual sexual pleasure helps with bonding within a relationship. Couple partners often have increased relationship satisfaction when they fulfill one another's physical desires. You may find positive growth in your relationship when you are able to express yourself and your physical desires. The whole dimension of spirituality is to grow beyond the physical, to taste something beyond the physical. If your involvement with the physical is very deep, Naturally, your attachment to the body is very strong. It is not sex which can be an impediment in one's growth, but one's attachment to the body definitely is an impediment. There is no question about that. 
सेक्स इज अ नेचुरल थिंग इट इज फिजिकल इट इज देर इन द बॉडी बट सेक्शुअलिटी इज इन्वेंटेड एंड क्रिएटेड बाय यू इट इज साइकोलॉजिकल ओन अंडरस्टैंडिंग इज इफ सेक्स बिकम्स फन prostitutes will disappear from the world there is no need for any woman to fall so low to sell her love at least leave one thing love out of the marketplace just one thing which is not a commodity it has no price labeled on it it is immensely valuable but it has no price the man who goes to the prostitute is falling in his own eyes the woman who is functioning as a prostitute is deep down condemning herself because she is selling something which is priceless but remember priests and prostitutes will disappear together it is the priests who have forced millions of women to be prostitutes because they have created the idea of sin in your mind all these things are interconnected and i always go to the very root that's why i emphasize let sex be a playfulness a fun and after the invention of the pill there is no problem you need not be worried about children now it is completely fun with no responsibility with no trouble following it enjoy it put your mind aside tell to the priest to go to hell who is continuously in your mind talking to you ya khati ya ya khati ya you are making love and the priest is giving his sunday sermon no love is such a beautiful phenomenon that you should learn the art of love just as i say the art of life if you can afford your room for love should be separate because it is a temple and when you enter the room of love you should leave your shoes out and your heads too <laughs> just put them in the shoes and before you make love have a good shower be clean meditate for a few minutes make it a beautiful experience let the room be 
not lighted by electricity. but by candles. <laughs> Let there be some fragrance, <laughs> just as it is in the temples, burn fragrance <laughs> and in the room of your love never do anything else. <laughs> no fighting, no argument, if you are not in a good mood then it is better not to go to the room of love. You are unaware of many things. The same bed the husband and wife sleep, they fight, they argue, they throw pillows at each other and then they make love too on the same bed. They don't understand that each act, each thought, each feeling has its own vibration. The room of love should be full of the vibration of love. I want love to be your only God. And with God, you need not be serious. You have to be playful, joyous. It is simply a question of understanding what is happening to you. And the very understanding will change the whole thing. The whole method of meditation to suggest to Latin lovers so they may <laughs> find their way. The simplest method for lovers is while they are making love, they should make it a sacred experience. All the religions have destroyed the sacredness of love. They have condemned it as a sin and the conditioning has gone so deep in human mind that people are making love in such a hurry as if They want to finish it as quickly as possible. Naturally, if it is a sin, it is better finished soon. Mm -hmm. Their hearts are guilt-ridden, their minds completely full of sin. If lovers want to make love a meditative experience, 
then first thing is to drop the idea that it is sin, that it is something wrong. It is something immensely beautiful, a tremendous gift of nature, of existence, for which you should not be guilty, you should be grateful. And to show your gratefulness, you have to make a special place for it. Every house and every couple which can afford should have a separate room just for love. No other vibe there, no fight, no argument, no throwing of pillows, They should enter the room after taking a bath as if they are going into a temple. The room should be full of burning, beautiful incense. There should not be glaring lights, just candles, dim light, and they should not be in a hurry, because the foreplay is immensely important. For the simple reason, because the woman's whole body is erotic, man's whole body is not erotic. His sexuality is local, just limited to his genitalia, but the woman's whole body is erotic, and unless she starts her whole body throbbing with joy, with ecstasy, she will not have any orgasmic experience. If the man plays enough with the woman's body, the woman plays enough with the man's body, and the meditation technique is, while you are playing with each other's body, remain a witness, don't get identified. So there are four persons, not two. Mm. The woman and the witness inside, the man and the witness inside, the witness is simply watching what the man is doing to the woman, what the woman is doing to the man. The witness has no judgment of good and bad. It is simply like a mirror, showing what is happening. This witnessing is nothing but awareness alertness, consciousness, and particularly in the foreplay, if you are conscious, alert, then there is a possibility you both will know exact time when your bodies are ready to make love. You will feel the bioelectricity of each other's body.
while you start making love, don't be in a hurry. Let the woman be always on top. The missionary posture is the worst posture in the whole world. In the East, nobody knew before the Christians reached there that man can be on top of the woman. It is so brutal. It is so ugly. The woman is delicate. And a huge animal <laughs> is doing push-ups <laughs> over the poor woman. In India it is called missionary posture because it was known only when missionaries came to India. They made India aware that this too is possible. Otherwise, woman is always to be on top. And scientifically, it is right that the woman should be on top. Because then she can be more active and man can be less active. If the man is on the top, the woman cannot be more active and the man is more active. If he is more active, he comes to his ejaculation very soon. And the woman has not yet come to the point where she can have the orgasm. If the woman is on top and she is active and man remains inactive, every possibility is that by the time the woman comes to orgasm, the man will be coming to orgasm. And if both come to orgasm at the same time, then there is a tremendous meeting and merging, as if bodies disappear and two souls are no more two souls, two beings are no more two beings. And the witnessing continues. That is your inner work of meditation that goes on. You are witnessing. After your orgasm has settled, is slowly, slowly disappearing, watch it. Watch as it is coming up, watch it is, as it explodes, watch as it starts settling again back to the normal state of your bodies. Then don't be in a hurry to separate from each other. Remain together for a while. In Tantra that is called Valley Orgasm, that is not known to millions of people. The first orgasm was peak orgasm. You had met together 
on the peak of your energy. Now the peak has disappeared, but every peak has a valley by its side. Without a valley there can be no peak. So if you can remain silently watching together, you will be amazed another orgasm with a totally different beauty, a different depth, a different joy. the valley orgasm. Until the valley orgasm disappears and you come back again to the normal, don't separate. Meanwhile, all the time the witnessing continues. When you separate, just don't start going to sleep Something very essential is, is still there and that is the afterplay. You have made such a turmoil in the whole energy of each other's bodies, minds, that it is needed, you massage each other's body, play with each other's body. And beautiful incense, flowers, candlelight, music. If you feel like dancing, you dance, but the witnessing continues. Why I am insisting that witnessing continues. I am emphasizing it because if you do it many times, then one day you can try just witnessing without your man, without your woman, alone, in the same room, in the same atmosphere, with the same incense which creates the same memories, the same light, the same milieu, and you start simply witnessing, sitting there, and you are for a great surprise that all that has been happening with the woman starts happening just inside you without the woman or without the man. You start moving slowly to the peak orgasm, the same experience with no physical, no biological expression and you reach to the valley orgasm, the same experience. You have learned meditation through love and you have also learned love through meditation, which will go on enriching each other. And this will bring maturity to both the persons. Mm. And the maturity will release their repressed intelligence, awareness, lovingness, 
compassion and it will destroy jealousy, anger, hatred. It will bring tremendous changes in you. Those changes will be the proof that you are on the right track. 